your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Say, hey, Mr. McKenzie could have been a lot nicer. You think everybody in Eastbrook is like him? Shh, I hear you. Be careful of these stairs, darling. I will. Niceness isn't what counts when you're picking out a general contractor. Besides, Mr. McKenzie's nice enough. He's simply too busy. If he were nicer, he wouldn't be so busy. You are completely sure of that. He wouldn't be so greedy. He'd let somebody else in Eastbrook do some of the building. Then uh, he'd be able to do ours, huh? Of course he'd be able to. You heard him say he'd rather work for an architect like us. Us? Of course, us. I've heard so much about building houses since we bought the farm that I'm ready to sit right down and design a small cathedral all by myself. (laughs) You mean I can retire? I still don't see why we can't make all the changes ourselves. That's what I thought it was going to be like, buying a house and moving into it. You think I married you for a pioneer woman? I can just see you, Mrs. Norton. Chopping down trees with a double-headed axe. Double-headed? Plowing fields with a double-headed ox. I once had an ox with two heads. I didn't care for him at all. What was wrong? Did he have more brains than you? Never mind me. <laughs> if you're so happy with the brains you've got, why can't we build the changes ourselves? You told me it was going to be so uncomplicated. Mm, let me out on the street. I need some air. David, are we on our way to see another general contractor now? We are. But I thought Mr. McKenzie was the best contractor in Eastbrook, and the only one, too. Say, where do you think we are, Mrs. Norton, up in the North Woods? This is a thriving metropolis. With a population of 87. 2,887. When did you ever count them? I looked it up in the almanac. Then it ought to be 2,889 counting us. I counted us already. Out of this little bunch of people, there's more than one general contractor. There's Mr. Willis. I I think his office is above the hardware store. Why is everybody's office over something else? Really, Eastbrook is just like a layer of cake. Just. Then there's the other one. What's his his name? We saw a sign out on the way down to the center of town from the farm. Paradiso. Isn't that a lovely name, David? It means paradise. What a linguist you turned out to be. It's a hidden talent. David, you know, I think we ought to get Mr. Paradiso to do our rebuilding. I don't know. His place wasn't much of a recommendation. That little bit of an old house with just a sign out in front and an old truck in the yard, I I don't think he can have much of a reputation around here. But it's such a nice name, Paradiso. What's in a name? Everything. You don't need any super sense to know that a man named Paradiso wouldn't build a house that leaks. Plumbing that doesn't work. I'm glad you think so. But when it comes to builders, I'm inclined to think that reputation is more important than a name. David, sometimes you sound so stuffy. I'd rather be stuffy than chilly. (laughs) I'm not going to have someone we never heard of rebuilding our house. Such a marvelous antique that I'm surprised you let anyone who wasn't born in 1760 touch it. We haven't seen Mr. Willis yet. Maybe he was. Oh, here's his place. Two, three, one, Main Street. Up we go. More stairs. Only one flight. I don't know why all general contractors have to have their offices on the second floor. I guess they'd be too busy on the street floor. Judged by Mr. McKenzie, they're too busy already. Well, here we are. That wasn't too bad, was it? J.F. Willis and Son, General Contractor. I still think Paradiso is a nicer name. Darling, for the last time, I am not interested in names. Should be, I bet you. Go on in, dear. Mr. Willis? Yes, sir. Our name is Norton. We've just bought the old Tucker place on River Road. That's nice. Hope you like it. I hope so, too. We're planning some alterations. I'm an architect, and I've drawn up plans and specifications. We're trying to find a builder who will contract... Try Paradiso. 
Paradiso. I'm not saying anything. Got all the work I can handle, but Mr. Willis... Besides I can... which, I don't want to handle any more. But Mr. Willis... With things like they are now, only crazy fellows that do any building. You go see Paradiso. He's crazy. But Mr. Willis, things have to be built. I mean, we have to have the house fixed so we can live in it. Prices so high, wages so high, materials so short, and then only little jobs. Only a crazy man wants to handle it. But you go see that Paradiso. He's crazy. Is he a good builder? Things used to be different around here. My dad and I used to build big places. Built one stone wall for Colonel Armbruster. You seen his place? Wall cost more than $100,000. Now they want you to work harder for $20,000. $20,000? David, I didn't think it was going to cost that much. It isn't. You better go see Paradiso. I thought you said he was crazy. He's crazy, noisy, obstreperous, inexperienced, unreliable, disrespectful, and brash. But he's the only builder in Eastbrook who ain't booked up for the next two years. And I hate to think why. Who cares why? Come on, David. It's such a pretty name. <laughs> little place, isn't it? Maybe we ought to wait until next year to do the repairs. You just got finished saying it's going to leak all over the rug if we didn't have it fixed right away. I never said any such a thing. Why, David Norton, look at Mr. Paradiso now. Hello, Mr. Paradiso. Hello. Say, I'm getting pretty famous. How'd you know it was me? By the sign. You like it, huh? I'll build you one, too. Oh, we don't want a sign. We want a bay window and an extension and a laundry. And I want a Rolls Royce and a yacht and a couple of Great Danes. Great Danes? We have one, David. He likes Great Danes. Uh, Mr. Paradiso, I merely want a general contractor. Mister, you sure must want awful bad if you found me. But I want you to know you found an awful good man. You seem to be very sure of yourself. I am. Why not? Well, come in the car and sit down with us unless we could go into... No. Maybe you'd better come in here. Fine with me. The only office I have is other people's cars. Our name is Norton, and we just bought the Tucker place, Mr. Paradiso. Well, congrats, Mrs. Norton. You got yourself the finest house in the neighborhood. That's a real salt box, you know. We know. It was built in 1760. I think it's the best house Adam Martin built. And I suppose you know he built most of the good old houses around here. No, we didn't know. You can do some wonderful things with that house if you get the right architect and the contractor with a real imagination. Uh, where are you going to get the architect? My husband is the architect. Professional or amateur? I don't like amateurs. Amateur. David, don't be silly. He's even a partner architect, Mr. Paradiso. Oh, that's fine. When do we start to work? Well, uh, there's just a few things we have to decide first, aren't there? Don't you even want to see the house before you take the job, or don't contractors bother with that anymore? <laughs> You've only just bought this place, and you're beginning to sound like a man who's lived in Connecticut for 80 years. You must have been talking to some of the other builders around here. If we hadn't, Mr. Paradiso, we never would have come to you. Oh, yes, we would. We saw the sign. Do you mean that one of those fellows sent you to see me? Mr. Willis recommended you. Mr. Willis recommended me? Oh, why, that crusty old galoot. I didn't think he had it in him. Then it's all settled, David. When is he going to start? Well, nothing's settled. We haven't even told, told him what we're doing yet. I know what you're going to do. How do you know? It took us days to decide. No, I've seen the house. You're going to break out the dining room wall and put in a big bay with casement. That's right. Then you're going to take the cellar, throw out that old heating unit, put in a new small one, and use the rest of the space for a playroom. I wish you'd been with us the other night when we were deciding. We would have saved an awful lot of time. And if you like that house as much as you ought to, you're probably going to build an extra wing for the kids. Well, I, I must say that's pretty much what we had in mind. Uh, here are some of my blueprints I drew up. Uh-huh. Well? Well, I haven't got time to really look them over, but just with one look at the way you've laid out the studding of that bay, I see you know something about how those old houses have got to be treated. How? With a little respect. We want to be respectful, but not chilly. You seem to respect them yourself, Mr. Paradiso. I do. We've got a lot to learn from them, too. We should think of these old houses as buildings that were put up for people to live in. Not like most people around here think, uh, something just kind of cute. David, that's just what you said when you first saw the salt box. I like your sentiments, Mr. Paradiso. Have you got any sample of your performance? My performance, Mr. Norton, is in my hands. I was a carpenter before the war. I built a lot of houses here for the other contractors. 
Now I want to build them for myself. I want to look at them and know these houses are good and sound because Paradiso built them. I understand your feelings, but after all, this is this is a very important thing for us. It's our first house. That's why I'd like to do it for you, Mr. Norton, because it's a very important thing for me. It's my first house, too. David, I just know that... Excuse me, Mrs. Norton. Look... I can't promise you bargain basement prices for fixing up your cellar, Mr. Norton, but I do understand that nobody would want to pay a man as much for his first job as he'd get for the 10th or 20th. Well, I, I wasn't thinking of the price so much, Mr. Paradiso. Well, if you're thinking of the workmanship, you can stop thinking. My father was a carpenter in Italy, and his father, too. And when I make a house, it's because I love it. I love it enough to be tough with it and make it do the kind of things it has to do for the people who are going to live in it. I've got to love it, so I'll be proud of what it does. You know, I think you love that house the same way my husband does. If I didn't, Mrs. Norton, I wouldn't touch it with a ten-foot ad. Oh, I know what that means. That's for making funny marks in old beans. <laughs> I know what it means, too. It means you have very good eyes. Eyes? Oh, you mean I know a nice name when I see one on a sign. There's nothing very wonderful about that. But it isn't everybody, Mrs. Norton, who knows Paradiso when they see it. Uh, that's meant to be a pun, I guess. Mm, it's more than that. It's a record. It's the first time I've been able to make a joke about my name before the people I'm talking to, Megan. <laughs> my name means paradise, you know. <laughs> yes, so, so my wife told me. I just put that sign up yesterday, too. Are you going to put up a sign for us, too? You want me to do the work? We do. Now it's my turn to say that we've a lot of things to decide still. Well, we, uh, we won't have any trouble deciding about them. I, I want you to take the prints and... And you can give us your estimate tomorrow. That's the way people ought to talk. Listen, Mr. Norton, we won't have any trouble about anything. It's the first house you've owned for yourself, and it's the first I'm going to work on for myself. And as for a sign, well, your house will be the sign. Because it's going to be the finest thing anybody in Connecticut ever saw. You see, I want everybody in Nutmeg County to look at your house, Mrs. Norton, and see for himself that this is where the Nortons found Paradiso. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. hardly blame the young folks for wanting to go out if they don't find amusement and refreshment at home. But give them good company, good books, give them plenty of ice-cold Coca-Cola, and they're usually more than willing to stay put. In fact, they seldom ask for anything more. Isn't it good to think that youth's favorite drink can still be had for only five cents a bottle? Mighty little to pay for such wholesome refreshment, you'll agree. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause. The pause that refreshes. 